Well, good morning, everybody. It's Leanne Graff with today's live video. It's a free class every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, I've got a lot of fun projects today, today to show you. Two-step stamping, which is kind of a favorite. It um, well, it gives a little life to your stamps when you have two tones of, of ink on um, your images. So happy, happy Valentine's Day. Let me know you're here. Uh, chime in where you're from. Let me get my laptop synced up. Um, yeah, if it's your first time here, be sure to tell me that too. We are, um, yeah, it's Valentine's Day and my husband is actually not out of town. He does a lot of traveling for work and when, he always gets up earlier than I do. I'm a late nighter, he is an early morning person. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, when I woke up today, I had some roses and a donut for breakfast, which I haven't eaten yet. And then he made this. So this is, he used my stamp set. He found it, it was in the bottom of the drawer. He had to search pretty hard for it. My Life is Beautiful Million Dollar Stamp Set. And then he made, he just got a square card, a square uh, card. He couldn't find a Valentine stamp. It was way over across the room on the other side of the room. Wasn't in my drawer with my other stamps. And uh, so <laughs> he made this and he used the Thinking of You in here instead. Uh, we could have put Life is Beautiful because I think it is. But anyway, this is a 3D printed little heart stand for a card. He made it actually last night. He put it together and glued it and it's a little card stand. I thought that was pretty clever. He actually thought ahead of time. He said it wouldn't take, um, I'm slippery. I put some lotion on my hands. So then he found a heart punch and did a little heart punch. So isn't that fun? Yeah. That's, I love it when he gets in my stamps and starts stamping things, so that's pretty cool. That'll be a nice memento <laughs> I can keep up for a while. And it has a nice stamp or um, stand, so that, that'll be great for display, too. Okay, all right, so I brought in the celebration uh, brochure and the add-on, what they call it, more to celebrate. So remember, right now, through the end of February, there are multiple things you can get free with orders. And uh, everything is still available, which I'm shocked at. I thought for sure the papers would be gone and sold out in here. So um, so there are a bunch of things from the annual catalog and the designer paper, Enjoy the Journey, from the spring catalog that's free with a $50 order, and two kits, two um, all-inclusive kits that are also free. So those are $20 item, I think. The punches are 18 so there's some good value, 12, and then the Eden's Garden Bundle, which I think is in the late high 40s, which is free with a $100 order. So lots of good options. If you need some products before celebration is, order, is over, be sure to get them in February so you can take advantage of the free stuff. I do have host codes to use if you want to order from me, and these are my gifts for um, online orders over $55 during February these beautiful milky dots in four different colors. So that's my gift to my online customers. Also reiter uh, uh, reiterating that my email has changed. So I hope nobody is sending me emails and thinking I'm not responding because um, I was hacked a month ago or so and lost my email and my YouTube channel. So look for me under my name before it was under Flowerbugs Ink Spot. Now we um, started a new one. I've been uploading a lot of previous videos, so there's a lot on there. Be sure to subscribe. If you're following me on Facebook and you sometimes don't get notified when I'm live, the best thing to do is follow me on uh, YouTube because you can watch them at any time. Be sure to subscribe and then you'll get notified when I'm, I um, post a new video. So whether it's Facebook or here, um, my blog, my newsletter, there's lots of different ways to follow me. Okay, let's do prize patrol. So last week's prizes um, were for uh, sharing were these uh, some fun fold cards and so, yeah, some neat cards that I had in a kit to go uh, probably a year ago or so. So this is for sharing and the winner of the cards was Kathy Strange. So I think I spelled it wrong. It's supposed to be I-E, but congratulations, Kathy. And the winner for commenting was Diane Hollinger. So she gets the ephemera uh, in Expressions in Ink Pack. 
So thank you so much for helping get the word out on my videos. Appreciate that so much. For commenting um, this next, this video, I have a pack of calendars. So this is um, 2023 sticky calendars. And this is what you can, one thing you can do with them. I haven't finished this yet. I need to change the month too. <laughs> um, so they're called tear off calendars. I don't know where I got them from, some scrapbooking site, I believe, but you can do multiple ways. You can do post-it holders, just put them on the card front, lots of different ways to do that. So that's my prize for commenting. So help me get the word out on my videos if you enjoy them, I appreciate that. So driving by stamp set, new for sharing for this week's video. Okay, really quickly, I have to remind you all who are not demonstrators yet that there's a great deal going on right now through February for the starter kit. So you have a choice of $99 without the mini machine or, I mean, sorry, yeah, without, and $129 for the starter kit with the mini machine. You can choose from blue or white. This is called Boho Blue, and we, it's said to be a new color coming out in May with the new catalog. But you can pick up to $175 in product of your choice, and you spend either $99 or $129. And that includes paper pumpkin, a new paper pumpkin kit. It includes the, the catalogs that you get. So there's a lot of product and business supplies included in the kit. So if you want to join, I'll put the link in the description of the video. I'd love to add you to my team. We've added 14 people so far, I think, or is it 15 now? So yeah, we're growing. We have a great time on our group. One thing you need to know that the first quarter is waived. So you do not have to put your $300 minimum order in until June 30th. So you will be a demonstrator active through June 30th and every order you put in counts towards that first 300. So it's really cool that the first quarter, which is January, February, and March is waived and the next full quarter is April, May, and June. And that's when your 300 is due. But the neat thing about the $300 minimum is they count our sales as retail, but we're only paying 80% of that. So when you think of putting a $100 order in, we're only, uh, it's only costing us 80 because of our 20% discount. So it's a great deal. And you know what? You can pre-order from the new catalog starting in April. So you can get new catalog things, new colors. And I have something important to tell you. I'm almost 100%, I'm 99% positive we're going to have a color refresh this year. That means all of our colors, um, no, not all. I'm sorry, take that back. A percentage of our colors will go away and we'll get new ones. So they do this about every five to seven years. And that means that if you have favorite colors, say pool party or um, gosh, uh, Granny Apple Green, uh, some of those colors might go away. So you want to be sure to watch the updates when they tell us about the new colors. Um, like I said, the reason I'm almost positive is because we're getting pretty peacock back and lost the goon back. And the reason I know about that is because we have a sneak peek of online exclusives demonstrators can order right now. And one of the, um, I'm going to get some my paper out here. One of the reasons is this paper pack has Lost the Goon and Pretty Peacock in it. So because those are former in colors, I am guessing we're going to get some new colors back. So this is paper that we as demonstrators can pre-order right now and you can actually add this onto your starter kit. So when you go in to sign up for your starter kit, you can add this, all of this online exclusive uh, product and that's coming live to customers on March. But you can get it now when you sign up as a demonstrator. So the, there's a bundle and it is called Irresistible Blooms and that is the stamp set and the dies. They are so fun. I've been playing with it. We're gonna use it at my team meeting. And I'm not sure if this is one of the cards, but this is, I'm using that paper and that gorgeous 
uh, die. There's a long, uh, detailed one, and then a, a window die. So those are the leaves. And Lori made this for our team swap, and I thought I'd share. She used the paper. It's one of these patterns. And she actually cut that out of the designer paper. So you can see how that is. I've been playing with it, so it's been fun. But that is that double pillar card that she made. We Her um, swap in her card club was to make a window card, and that's what she made for hers. So a couple other products you can get are three embossing folders. It's in a pack. You don't have a choice, you get all three. And here is one, it's kind of a crosshatch. There's another one, almost like a star, and then a really deep polka dot. So those are the three embossing folders. And then there is a specialty paper, and let's see. I've been using this, I did a swap with it. So here is the copper, the silver, and the gold, and it's in 12 by 12. So that is the specialty paper, so isn't that cool? So those are some of the items, I didn't get everything, oh yeah, and then there are these loose frosted dots, just gorgeous. Um, yeah, in yellow, I think coral, and pretty, pretty peacock. I believe. So those items, um, demonstrators can order now and customers can order in March, but if you sign up, you can add any of these items. There's also a new alphabet onto this, um, your starter kit. So I highly encourage you, even if you're only gonna stay in for a little bit and not sell, it is fine. You can still get these, um, these items and enjoy the discount while you can. When you're done, you just stop ordering. It's the easiest, um, best way to get a discount on your products. I have so many people that put in $100 orders and I'm like, oh gosh, you could sign up for that. You're putting in an order anyway, just put it towards the starter kit and get the deal. So <laughs> anyway, okay, um, I have one mystery box left. I've been giving away mystery boxes with a $100 order. Um, using a host code. So if you're interested in that, it's over $175 in product. Um, another thing they just announced is Paper Pumpkin is 10 years old. I don't have the 10 year anniversary on here, but they're adding a free stamp set onto the box. So it's a 10 year um, celebration and they do that in their anniversary almost every year to add a free stamp set. So if you get a subscription to it, it's $67.50, you get a free uh, celebration uh, item. So it's a great time to get Paper Pumpkin and get a three month subscription. I'm actually gonna order multiples of these because I love the additional stamp set and I think they'll be great gifts. So that is one other special happening right now. Um, let's see, I think I've covered all the important bits. Oh, Couple things, again, I like to give you an update on what is unavailable right now. Stampin' Up! is not doing back orders anymore. They are just turning the numbers off when they're out. It has helped keep the company solvent. Uh, it solved a lot of uh, shipping costs and, and whatnot. So it's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. We want Stampin' Up! to stay in the black and not in the red, so. Yeah, okay, so the gnomes dies are not available. Framed florets dies, queen bee dies, and the dainty delight dies. Um, that's part of this, though some of those are from the spring catalog. And by the way, I refer to this as the spring catalog, even though it's really referred to it as January through April, it's just easier, I call it spring. Just like I call it winter or holiday for the other one. <laughs> it was the old, old names, but I'm still there. Um, the Lucky Clover Punch is sold out and not returning. That was a tough decision, I'm sure. Country Bouquet Punch, Easter Bunny Punch are not available, but they will be back. Um, okay, I think that's it. So we are going to play today with the Two-Tone Flora Bundle. I, I hadn't honestly played with this until I got ready for the Facebook Live, but it comes with um, dies that match the images and this detailed 
um, die that cuts out. And it came out, came out beautifully. I, cut, I went through um, my cut and emboss machine twice and used my brush and uh, the, that piece came out beautifully. So I'm going to show you some samples of what I'm not making first today. So this is one of the cards and this uses the, um, I think it's called Fancy Flora, uh, something Flora designer paper. So that's the background. And then I just added, simply added that new navy bordered ribbon, couple die cuts and a greeting for that pretty card. I love the colors with the coral with the navy. Here's another one that I'm not gonna make today. Here's showing you that detailed background die. Simply added a, piece, a strip of soft succulent. The background is the fine shimmer paper. And this is vanilla with a little bit of soft succulent and orchid oasis. And that is actually the uh, evergreen in color. So very sparkly, I love the shimmer paper. So that's another card. Now these are swaps I received. This is again that flora paper with a couple um, die cut flowers. Here's another one. This is the ging country gingham and that is back. It was unavailable for a short time, but it's back. And a couple of the die cuts and the images here. And another one, and I love this layout. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using this layout very soon on, for a card but four uh, pieces of designer paper and a middle a white piece and then a flower. So beautiful, I, I, I do really love a two-step stamp. So, all right, let's get to our projects. Yeah, these are gorgeous cards um, and projects. So again, we're gonna use two-tone flora. First, I'm gonna show you a two-in-one project using that die, that detailed die. Let's see. So this one right here. So and I think it's it's meant to be this way. So I'm going to put the um, measurements up there and show you. We're going to be doing some sponging. And a lot of my greetings today are from the framed florets. Now this is the one with the dies, the oval dies that aren't available. But I use these greetings a lot. They're just they're just. I don't know, they're great greetings. I use, like I say, I use them a lot. I really enjoy them. Okay, I'm gonna get a piece of scrap paper here because we're going to be sponging. Okay, so here are the cards that I did. Super colorful, right? So what I'm doing is sponging through this so this is the background after I sponged on top of it. See that? This is just the background and this is the detailed die. So I think it's so clever um, of, uh, you know, people. I, I, I sure didn't uh, invent this uh, technique, but it is, it is a pretty one. So the colors I'm using are Daffodil Delight, Mint Macaron, and Calypso Coral. Very springy. So I usually start with the, uh, I'll start with the coral. Okay, and because I want to use, um, I want to keep the colors pretty specific on the flowers. As you can see, there are flowers and then there's leaves. So I've been using our small blending brushes, which are available in the mini catalog. So here, and I cut that maybe a little too small, I can see, but it's 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 going to be fine. I, I made this layer smaller so I could border that. So on my measurements here, the this card, this piece right here is a full quarter, four and a quarter by five and a half, and the one under it is smaller, three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So my coral piece, <laughs> which... I die cut a few things out of is the standard uh, uh, layer for a quarter sheet. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to try and make sure I use the correct brush. And now what I'm going to do is just get a little bit off there and then start with first little inking as you can see you tend to get a blotch 
So I'm just going to add a little color over here. And it's nice on the edge because you can start off the paper and get that first blotch off the paper. But um, when you're going in the middle, it gets a little bit harder. And I do want to fill in almost all of this top piece with color. You can see all my border is filled in with color. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. I guess I really wouldn't need to go in the middle where the large circle is, but I'm going to just because I can't not. <laughs> okay, a little bit more there. I think that might be it for that color. Let me just set that aside. I'll get the, now if it moves like it just did, it's easy to put back in place. Just takes a little bit of work to get it lined up. There you go. Okay, now it's hard. I like to hold my ink pad, but I have to hold this too. And I probably could tape it, but because this layer is larger than that layer, I can't really tape it. So, um, and there's quite a bit of yellow on this edge. I feel like yellow is probably the softer color, depending on how much you add. I'm just gonna do a little bit up there, a bit here. And you know, I'm not gonna stress about the mixing of colors. And that's why I chose soft colors when you're doing a technique like this. You will want to choose something softer. So um, it, if it doesn't blend well or perfectly, it's not as big a deal bit of yellow right here. So I just left a little bit, as you can see, for the mint. Let's see if I can leave that in place. Okay, always be sure you have the right brush. Yeah, at first I thought, why do I need small blending brushes? But this technique here shows exactly why, why you might want to have the small blending brushes. I honestly started with the large and I switched over pretty quickly because I couldn't get in a lot of the areas that I wanted to. Okay, we're just about done and we'll see what we reveal below. Now you can do as dark of color as you want depending on, on what you want underneath or on top. It's pretty forgiving technique. I know there's a lot of these type of dyes. I don't, I don't know if there's a lot, but there's a few of these out there that you can play with. I'm just looking at my border, making sure that I have them all filled in. A little bit of leaf over here. Okay, there we go. Isn't that beautiful? So there are the two pieces. Love it. So cool. So then all you do is this one will be layered on that. Thanks, Linda. I'm glad you like the cards. I appreciate it when you guys give, give me a kind comment. Um, and hopefully it inspires you to either use your blending brushes or think about maybe masking. Because like we have that nice set of butterflies that you can make masks out of and sponge through the detailed butterfly to make a second card. Or of course we have our, our uh, masks that you can purchase as well. So yeah, there's lots of options there. Now this will go right on here and I can see I trimmed that a little bit more than I should have. So you know what I'm going to do? I don't know because I can't trim the top and the bottom anymore. Uh, am I okay with that layer? You know, I think I'm going to I'm going to be okay with it. Don't stress about the small stuff. Just going to use my bone folder on those. They're both both of these vanilla cards and I chose to use vanilla cuz I oh, I am crooked on here. I'm going to re bone fold that, make it mine in the correct way, and then just add some liquid glue to some of these larger areas and to a lot of the edge. Don't have to add it everywhere. 
just, and I, I do like to use smears rather than um, dots. I tend to like drag my um, glue so it doesn't have big glops, I guess you'd say, that can squeeze out. And instead of using my hand and getting inky, you know, it's easier to go on the back side and burnish so I don't ruin the ink. Actually, I don't mind that border, even though there's no border here. Well, there's a little bit at the top. <laughs> oh, well. And then this one, now that one's going to get a ribbon on it. They're so pretty. I just love the spring colors. I think I'm really ready. How about you all? Anybody having winter um, and getting tired of it? <laughs> so this is a ribbon I thought was current, and it's not. It's from the holiday catalog. It was a uh, woven, vanilla woven ribbon. So, but I'm going to go with it and use it up. So we're just going to do a little flag of ribbon for the one side. And that's all I have left. And the other card I'm going to change up. So when I add ribbon, how I like to do it, you've probably seen me do this many times. I put my ribbon in place, run my tape runner, ribbon and tape go, or glue dots go much better than liquid glue. So before I press that down firmly, I want to make sure that they're in perfect placement. I'm going to just scoot this one over just a little bit. Okay, now, and I can just use this one. To put this on the main card. Oh, I hope we don't. I don't know. I'm excited for new colors for the color refresh if we get that this year, which, like I said, I'm pretty positive we are. But um, yet, I don't want to say goodbye to any of our colors. There's, I know there's some that we don't use very much. Um, so saffron, I don't think people use a lot. Uh, Pacific Point, I think, is maybe not used as much. Either olive or pear pizzazz, one of those I could see leaving it depending on what they're bringing back. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. So I'm going to stamp the, on this, I'm going to do this card first right here, and stamp a flower using daffodil. So how I recommend you do this is, and I don't want this really bright because I want the greeting to stand out. So normally I would not stamp off for the detailed, but I, I am. I'm going to stamp off just a little bit and stamp it in the middle. Then you stamp this one and you definitely stamp off. And what I look at on here, every flower center, let me see, let me get this, um, has a, a specific center. This one has uh, little um, and, uh, stamens. And this one has like a, a half circle. So those two match, these two match, those two have this three thing, these have the little dots. So it's easy to see which one matches up. And I look at the center first to match these up. Now, honestly, I have to tell you, I have to take my glasses off because my <laughs> bifocals or whatever just are not friendly. So it's important to stamp the dark one first and then go over with the light one. To me, that works much better. So I'm looking at that, and I'm sorry if my head is in the camera, but that's how you match that up, is go for the center of it, then um, look at your edges, and that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, we're going to add a greeting. Oh, guess what? I put the greeting on my Stamparatus. Well... We will just, I'm going to take it off and put it on another block. This is the thank you from the framed florets. I do a lot of thank you cards, so that's what I want to do. Right over that flower. Okay, so that's what... That's the greeting. And this die right here, I used a lot of dies for these cards. So the dies for these cards are uh, Sentimental Park, which is this one right here. The Painted Label, which is this one. Stylish Shapes is the circle. And by the way, those are back again because they were unavailable. 
And uh, the last one is the Amazing Thanks dies right there for those, besides the dies that are in the two-tone flora. So I think I will add some dimensionals here. And pop that up. And I'll just put those here. So like I said, Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, and Mint Macaron. And this just gives a little, I could have made this circle a little smaller, but honestly, <laughs> the reason I didn't was because it was in my scrap uh, pile and it was already done. <laughs> so that's why I, why I used it. Okay, we're going to grab a mini glue dot, which this ribbon does not want to grab easily, and just fold that over. And it looks like I want to trim these one more time. And then, let's see, just add a little tape there and grab it. Okay, now to adhere this, I want to use quite a bit. Oh yeah, it does not like to go on ribbon. Sometimes it does, so I guess I have to use a mini glue dot, and other times it does not. But I don't want that to float, so I'm gonna add, <laughs> I'm getting so sticky, some mini glue dots to that ribbon. There we go, okay. And then add that, make sure the greeting is straight. And I did die cut, stamp and die cut an extra leaf that just I'm going to kind of sneak in here. A little more detail. Actually, you know what? I wonder if I can get it. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, next is the butterflies, which, oh, they go with everything. Okay. Use our take your take my pick tool. Whoop. Grab you, move you. There, we'll get a big one. I think I'm running out of my stickum on my take your pick. Yep, I can see I am. So I'll go at this end. And put that right there. Okay, that's the one card. The other card is also very simple to put together. Oh, let's see, which one did I stamp the inside? This one, there's the inside of that one. I don't think I have to do that, but I used that pretty leaf die twice and then added a die cut flower over it. Okay, so let's move on to this one. And kind of just had fun with layers on this one. So we're going to add and this die, like I said, is from the Sentimental Park. Then, I don't know which to do first. I'm gonna change it up just a little bit. There's my thank you. And I changed up the flower to different colors, at least in different, different uh, areas. Okay, I'm gonna do the flowers first. Sometimes when you're doing this multi-layered thing, it gets a little bit difficult to know which one to put first, where to put them. Um, this one has to go under that. And then I can add this. And I did, oh, where are my minis? Oh, I don't have my minis out here. So I'm gonna have to make some minis. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> can get a little tricky when you're wanting to pop up these greetings that need little bits. And it always makes you wonder, how far do I have to, how many do I have to add? But you don't want anything to sink. So I do need one over here. And I don't know if this is going to work. See if I can, yep. There we go, I got it. Okay. All right, and this one I wanna pop up. I love these layered, um, the look 
of the layered flowers and whatnot on here. And then one last leaf. And when I die cut, this is what I do. This got off a little bit, as you can see. So I'm just gonna simply trim it. I'm not gonna throw it away. Just give it a trim and not stress about it. Okay. All right, just a little bit of glue. A little bit of balance, adding one down here. Okay, now for the ribbon. Now I'm gonna use this time current ribbon and because I have the gold or the brushed brass butterflies, I'm okay with using this golden vanilla trim and I know I want it to go this way. So how I do that is to bring my tape runner diagonally on there. Just make sure that's what I want. So from this end to that end, yep. All right, so this is how I start it. Press it kind of on the third. I'm a little bit, and I'm gonna move that over. I'm a little bit beyond the third there. Then twist it. This is my favorite way. Now you could just do loops of ribbon. If you wanna save ribbon, you don't have enough, you could just do a loop here, an end here, a loop here. I have done that when I'm out of ribbon, and I just make sure there's a little bit showing, and then, depending on which way you want to do that. There you have your loopy ribbon finish for this card. So very pretty. And then when I add those butterflies on, I need it because my fangs is detailed. The reason I added the entire uh, large uh, piece of um, circle here, I, I needed these layers so you could read the fangs. Otherwise it just got lost on the card. And just looking at my lines here, I know the thanks isn't quite straight, but I'm okay with that because it's cursive. All right, and then just finish with a few of the brass butterflies, which I love because they're so flat, so nice and flat. Oops. Put this one in maybe down here. Okay, there's the two two for one cards. I think they're so pretty. Sorry, I can I can um, compliment myself. <laughs> oh, hi Peggy, glad you're tuning in. So yeah, this is this is the two for one cards. I cut one of these dies and sponge through it to get a second one. So yeah, I love that idea. It's really time saving and it feels like you're really making a great use of your time and your your pieces. So thanks so much. All right, so I haven't been, I've been busy. I haven't been looking at comments. So if I, I'll look later, if anybody has, um, has any questions, I will try and answer them in a little bit. But that's the first, I call them two for one floral lace cards. So mint macaron, daffodil, and clipso coral are the colors here. All right, and we are playing, if you just joined in, we are playing with the two-toned flora stamps or bundle. So that's what we're doing today. And I have one more card to share that is um, kind of, I guess, along the lines of more of a simple card, um, but almost when you're making your own background type thing. So here is the, I'll put it over here, is the measurements. And there's my card. And this is Orchid Oasis with Daffodil Delight and a little bit of Mint Macaron. So I love stamping my own uh, paper, and this is kind of the start of that. I can see this uh, stamp set as being a great one sheet wonder, just making a bunch of beautiful uh, background cards and using them all up. In fact, that might just be inspiring me to, to do that <laughs> very soon. Okay, we are using, like I said, daffodil, um, orchid, and soft succulent are the colors. Okay, so that's the colors we're using. Another spring, I love yellow and blues together and blue with a little purple. Yeah, uh, beautiful. One of my favorite things of stamping has always been to uh, create color combinations. It's just one of my favorite things to do, um, to see what I can come up with. Okay, we're gonna use the Stamparatus this time. Easy two-step stamping. Okay, when you do that, Make sure your pieces stay in the same place 
And because I used this last time, I'm gonna put it back in place. That's why it's important to stamp on your grid paper. Here is now, because I lifted it up and moved it, I can put it right back in place by, my flowers are here. And this is how I lined these up. I stamped the detailed dies first, then lined up my, oh, I gotta pick that up. That's how you pick it up. Okay, all right. So I know when I planned this card to lay my piece, and this is vanilla. By the way, I use vanilla on all those other cards too. It's been a while since I've used vanilla. So I thought that it would be time to get back into vanilla. So just gonna make sure that um, not, my magnets are not interfering with my stamping. Okay, so what we're gonna do, bring in the orchid. And like I said, I always like to, um, I put my stamp set under there so I have a nice firm base. I always do the dark first. In this case, it really wouldn't matter. But if I was stamping uh, with a block, I would use the dark first. And I'm gonna get out my friend Susie's little handy tool. It's just like a carpet uh, a floor protector, a block and a knob. And you've got a slider for your stamparatus. Handmade, she doesn't sell them. You know what, I'm gonna ink that one again because it looks a little, little light. Okay, now for the other side, and it's probably off camera, so I'll slide this back. So our Stamparatus is so genius that you get two uh, hinge plates. So we're going to ink the greeting and the solid at the same time. Now, because that's solid, I want stamped off. I'm gonna take a scrap paper and just lightly press that off because I can't stamp off with the Stamparatus, right? But that one I want, in fact, just to be sure. I'll ink it one more time. Okay, scoop this out of the way. Bring that back in and stamp. Get my handy dandy tool. And there we go, a little bit. Hmm. I'm gonna just press again. You know what, I'm gonna do that again because I either took too much off, they're a little bit muted for me. We'll see what happens the second time. Sorry, I'm probably right in the in the way. I'm just trying to. It's hard. It, like you said, it's kind of awkward to stamp off, and you end up getting a little bit of a mottled look when you use that paper, which actually probably would be okay. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so I'll take off the magnets, and then I can finish stamping the regular way. Now, if you have a Stamparatus, you know you cannot close this lid. You have to remove it <laughs> for storage so you don't uh, ruin your hinges. So never have both in there and store them. They, it doesn't like that. Okay, so now we need to, I do have some pre-done flowers, but I have to stamp the leaves. So those are the, the flowers we're going to add. Um, but I also, there's another image in this set, a double image, this one and, oh, those two. Kind of a little group of small flowers that I want to add in yellow, uh, or daffodil. Okay. It's up there so I can work on then the leaves. And I think I'm going to do the leaves first. I can always work around the other and lost my leaves. I bet they're over on my desk. Hold on a second. I was still playing this morning. Okay, so we're going to add a little leaf there. One there. I just want them to peek out. Okay, now close this and bring in the daffodil. So we know that that's gonna go here. And this one is a little different flower than that one, but that's, that's okay. So now I can add these. Oh, no. 
And in this case, I'm at, I'm doing the uh, larger one, which I'm going to stamp off first, which is not what I did with the flowers. Stamp off and I'll do it right there. Now, this one is the detail inside. So now I have to make sure, and this is really hard to line up, especially in such a light color. So <laughs> it's very not easy. So yeah, I got off a little bit on that one. Trying not to get my head in the in the camera. Not too bad though, but they are off. They are not perfect. Okay, and on here, I just didn't like that center that was plain. So I thought I'd add a few dots to the center of the flower and bring in some blue. That's what I did there. And on that one, I added dots. I don't know. I'm going to try it on this one. Just in those little dotted areas. It kind of brings it to life almost. Just a little, little something. So that's what the Stampin' Rate marker. Okay, move that aside. And these are going to get popped up. one on this one okay so I know I want to cover up where the leaves start that's kind of my goal and then this one can maybe sneak underneath a little bit okay there we go got that and here I stamped in evergreen because I was gonna do more evergreen leaves and I ended up not it still works but I do like the the orchid oasis better so this is going to go in here so like i said this is a very simple card even though there are some die cuts and whatnot on here i didn't do much to it just a standard uh, four inch by five and a quarter piece of vanilla but i think the colors with the yellow and the orchid are just beautiful oh i did add some centers i see that now which does um Kind of bring those to life too. Just a few little tiny dots. There we go. Kind of sneak in there. Okay, and then the last thing, of course, are those pretty butter butterflies. It just when you need something, these just works. They just work. Um, just to add a little, oops, little something. keep thinking I grab it. All right. So what do you think of those cards? I think they're beautiful. Oh, the inside. So the inside, hmm, I think I left my other piece of vanilla over there too, but I simply added a couple die cuts that I had extra of while I was working. So that's what I did with that. So yeah, that is the last card that we're going to do today with the two-tone flora, if you just joined me. There's that one, and then the other pretty ones are these. So that's what we did today. If you just joined us, you're gonna want to watch how we did, how I did the um, the background sponging through the mat, the die cut. So super fun way to use your your detailed dies that you might own. Okay, let me think here what I have left to say. Um, just that my card kits, there's just uh, five days left to get my card kits to go. And you know, there one uses the Enjoy the Journey designer paper and the other is, I don't have them here, but you can see them on my shop. This is where you can see my glue stands, my uh, tutorials, my kits to go are all on my shop, flowerbugshop.com. And that's where you can get, like I said, the glue stands that we sell. My husband makes them with this 3D printer and they fit our multi-purpose glue wonderfully, keeping the glue to the tip. So most people do use the fine tip and not the wide tip. So that's why we did them like that. So yeah, get in on the, the, tutor the kits or the tutorials. Um, the kit's only available through the 19th. Sometimes I have extra. 
Um, but yeah, that's what we have. And uh, if you want to subscribe to getting my kits, let me know. You get one every month and you get some perks, some extra product and surprises every few months when you are a subscriber and you save a little bit on shipping too. Okay, yeah, that is my favorite too. Well, I don't know if it's my favorite because I love the colorful ones, but this is just so soothing and soft and, and kind of almost French, French country colors. So anyway, thanks for joining me and I will see you again next Tuesday. All right, take care and, and stamp something and mail something. That's the, that's the hard part, <laughs> stamping and then actually sending it. All right, take care, everybody. Appreciate you watching. Okay, bye-bye.